My views of the Hizmet movement are is something that speaks to uh, a movement that is faith on the ground, faith in action. My name is John Joseph Massandrea. I'm a minister at Metropolitan United Church. I'm an ordained minister in the United Church of Canada, and I'm also a member of the executive of the Toronto Area Interfaith Council and reside in Cabbage Town. My views of the Hizmet movement are is something that speaks to uh, a movement that is faith on the ground, faith in action. And I speak to that because a sense of, I, I always tell people, I brag about what you, what, is done through the IDI Intercultural Dialogue Institute and, and certainly that as at its core, the Hizmet Movement, has people with, um, how would you put it, a machine in motion and uh, in a sense very focused, clear, act, clear action uh, and certainly coming from the country of origin being Turkey as a country that I happened to visit back in October but as a country that I've been studying from a personal note for many decades just because I'm a person who loves history and loves to learn about and realizing that when the origin, the country of origin for the Hizmet movement being Turkey as a country that is not just something that is new, it's in the, the DNA, it's in the life and breath of the region and the Turkish people in a sense in the Middle Ages when Turkish people were welcoming people of Christian, Jewish, and Muslim, not in a theoretical instance, but in a very tangible. And we often talk about the uh, Spanish Peninsula, the Kingdom of the Three Faiths, but I would sense that in the uh, Anatolian Plateau, that area of the world, that it wasn't just something that was an overnight, it was something that was an of course, something that became part of the normal day activity, and also in the philosophy of the people that lived and worked and resided. And, and it's more than tolerance. It's a sense of celebration. When I hear, your, let your love be as wide as the ocean, I mean, how, how can one disagree with words like that? When, when I've read his books and listened to uh, some of the talks, I find he's a, how would you put it, a combination of perhaps a Gandhi and uh, the Dalai Lama, so to speak, maybe even Mother Teresa. And he's not just speaking, he's living the ideas that he is uh, conveying to many people. And I would say in our modern day, when so many people talk about, how would you put it, people feeling far away from any faith tradition uh, he is one of these people that is helping people point back to, but not, how would you put it, a dogmatic faith tradition, just with creeds and dogma ideas, practical faith. And it's interesting, it makes, he makes me think of a book I've been reading, Anatheism, by Richard Kearney, which is uh, Returning to God After God. And it's out of a series I recently listened to called the, uh, it's After Atheism, from the CBC Ideas program. Very, very good, very well, well thought out. But the idea, so, so many people might say, well, I don't believe in anything, I'm an, I'm an atheist. But the, even the notion of after atheism, okay, so now we've, 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 we've played with that for a little while. Now we're, we're, what we're doing is we're having an anatheism, a returning to God after God, which is really powerful when you think about it. It's, it reminds us that uh, there's, a, there's a need and a hunger within all people. And I would say Fadullah Kalam speaks to that. And as a person who's a Christian, I see many pathways to God, and I would say Fadhudu Kalam is bringing that sense of richness that people want to 
pay attention to and feel compelled to, uh, not so much, maybe follow is a, is, a, is a word certainly, but listen, pay attention to, and incorporate into their personal practice. I would say the most significant contributions are, well, one, the office that is present in Toronto, that seems to be the hub of many core, but realizing this is an international movement, but learning that there are also schools, uh, helping to educate uh, children and youth, uh, the response to poverty, which is so vital. When you think of the growing gap between affluent and those who have nothing, uh, there needs to be people in his capacity that work with others to respond to poverty, but not just in a, a parental manner, where I'm, you know, in a sense, I'm going to give you food or shelter, but the idea, in essence, creating capacity, creating tools for people to build. One of the areas I'm very involved with is the, uh, the Rotary Club International. And the Rotary Club International is, uh, is, a, is a wonderful community organization that goes around the globe. But again, creating capacity. Uh, recently we were giving funds to, uh, we were shortlisted three projects. One was for water, one was for literacy, and another one was for a school in Cambodia. We thought, okay, we're going to give money to the trade school in Cambodia because uh, it makes more sense to be creating a school to educate people. And very much on a similar line, the work and ideology of Fatulakulam. Educate and you create capacity and tools for the next generation. I think of what the South Koreans are right now doing with their youth. They're teaching them how to use manual typewriters. Why? Because we know power isn't always stable. What do you do when the power goes down? When the power goes down, there's no internet, there's no computers. But if you teach an entire generation how to use manual typewriters, you'll have communication open. And this is very much, when you think of what they're doing, what Fatullah Ghulam is doing, there's a sense of we're going back to first principles of learning, helping people create their own sense of validity and dignity wherever they might be, regardless of their station in life. Back, I've always been fascinated by other cultures, and I believe all cultures have at their core value care, compassion, and humanity, authentic humanity for all people. Unfortunately, what we do with many of our cultures and traditions, we layer it with a lot of dogma that we sort of lose touch with. That. I would say at the core value, as I've met many people who are uh, in the teachings of Islam, that it goes back to that first principles of reaching deep into the heart of our soul and our life and our faith and thinking not only of ourselves, not only of our fellow brothers and sisters, but those beyond and outside our, our culture to say, yes, we matter and they matter, and together, when we work together, when we, when we suffer together, we grow together, and we heal together. And unfortunately, there's uh, other areas in the Muslim world, and we, we see what's happening right now in Iraq, uh, that represents a fundamentalism that is not unique to Islam. I mean, every culture, Christians have fundamentalists, I mean, Hindus have fundamentalists, Buddhists, but the danger is that that is perceived as the only pathway in the Islam, in, in Islam, and that unfortunately, especially after when we think of 9/11, overcoming the Hizmet movement is a great way to overcome the preconceived uh, misconceptions uh, that lead to Islamophobia. And uh, quite honest, when I was growing up in Etobicoke, uh, I don't think I knew anyone who would have said they were Muslim. I remember my high school. We did have a woman who was Hindu, and I think another person was Buddhist, but there may have been, but I don't, I don't go quite off remember, but it's, it's been wonderful over the years how now you see not just in Toronto, but you see Muslim, but where we were in Coburg, 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 Ontario, there were Muslim people having picnics just amidst every, and I wouldn't have thought in Coburg, because Coburg is about two hours east of Toronto, but clearly what's happening is what, what we celebrate in Canada, in a sense, 
with the Hizmet movement is that sense of, and Abdul Kasmali uses this plurality of society, pluralistic society, that is a celebration of all people where they are and where they're living and respect for. And I think that's something truly remarkable that speaks to perhaps the main premise and understanding of what the Hizmet movement is about and continues to be about. I would say Muslims having dialogue with non-Muslims is very important because, and dialogue needs to be celebrated as not just something that's sitting at a table and having a Pollyanna discussion about how wonderful things are. It's, it's gripping whole, uh, tightly those issues that, that cause us to feel uncomfortable. And I always go back to that wonderful notion. When you take a piece of dirt and put it in an oyster, you get a pearl. Why? Because the pearl, the oyster is irritated and it protects itself. But there's a sense of when we touch not only what we brings us joy, but also what brings us discomfort, I th believe there we learn from each other. And we hear about the challenges that we all face and what that means in our society. When, when people talk, when Muslims talk with non-Muslims, you remove, we remove whatever barriers may be possibly present. Muslims speaking to non-Muslims is speaking to the issue of disarming fear and inviting compassion, inviting that listening moment, but realizing that as we build homes beside each other, as we live in apartments or condominiums, as we sit on boards and committees, we're making decisions that affect everyone and not just ourselves. Well, I personally think if someone's engaging in a charitable act that's not about serving self, it, it needs to happen. If you look at the, the root of the word charity, Charity, Greek is a wonderful language, and unfortunately uh, English doesn't do it so well. The, uh, we have one word in English for love, and in Greek there's five. But charitas, the love of the other for the sake of God, is not about me, it's about God and loving another person. Char and that's what charity is, charitas. So that at the core, as a, not just a core value, a core principle, uh, which this motivation to address poverty head on, not just ideologically. I mean, the reality is if we, if we could get over our own egos, uh, our own need to have an administration that blocks a process, we could solve hunger and poverty tomorrow. But we get too many uh, people with too many barriers. His movement is about taking down the barriers and opening what that could be. I'll share with you recently there was the ice storm in Toronto where not only power went out, uh, people were without homes and shelters and enough food. One of the greatest challenges was, and I only know this because my sister happens to be a supervisor for Metro Foods, many of the grocery stores, they were faced because of the power outage throwing away millions of dollars of perishable food because assume, because there's a whole liability issue. But imagine, and I believe Hizmet Movement maybe could be one of the agencies that helps something like this in pros. We're talking about what, what do you do with disasters in the city. Uh, to be an, a, an agency that would take the responsibility for making sure that food went to where it needed to. I mean, imagine throwing away eggs and butter and cheese and meat when there's hungry people, not only in our city, but other places. But if we can get beyond the notion of, I would take the blame, because that's what it comes down to. I believe that his isn't worrying about taking the blame, but overcoming that barrier and being the instruments of change, of healing, of transformation. Gulen is, uh, in one short sentence, is considered by those of us from um, outside looking in, is a formidable ambassador interpreter of the most sublime, most authentic, 
underpinnings of not just the Islamic tradition, spiritual traditions. So if you look at Islam, we keep on saying Islam is a religion of peace and submission to the will of God. And peace is something that the Hizmet movement has been, and Fatela Gulen has been very, very focused on. Peace through love, through harmony. And Islam teaches love. It doesn't teach hatred. In fact, Islam says to kill one life is to kill humanity. And that type of progressive thinking, that type of approach, it's the true approach to Islam. And I think the Hizmet Movement and Fatela Gulen are on that path, the true path to Islam.